What's going on, guys? It's another Sunday afternoon. I'm back. I've been away for a while, but uh, you know, I was focusing on uh, the new Renko course that we have out. My Renko students. I've been doing that for uh, last month or so, but I wanted to get back in, start doing some more price action markups and analysis. So, it's Sunday afternoon. Let's get some trade plans in place. Uh, remember, everything that we look at today is for educational purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor, so these are just uh, my personal opinions on the market. So let's uh, get to right to it. First thing that we want to take a look at is going to be the news. We just want to make sure we take a look at some economic events that are coming up. Um, and we really want to look at just the major ones. Of course, you know, a lot of things are will have varying effects on the market. It's impossible to predict which way they're going to go. But one thing we do want to take a, a note of is we have NFP. We have non-farm payroll on Friday, of course, this being the first Friday of the month. So uh, make sure that you take that into account. If you're not a, a seasoned trader, if you haven't been doing this for a while, you're probably going to want to sit Friday out. It's a very volatile day in the markets. Okay, just uh, pure and simple. And if you are running the Mr. Robot EA, make sure you have that turned off. I would start looking to turn that off uh, by Wednesday, you know, Wednesday night. Start looking for a break in the trades uh, to pause that and then make sure you have that off through NFP. Once the markets, um, you know, stop being volatile, once they start consolidating, going sideways again, um, you know, start ranging again, then you can turn it back on. All right, let's start by looking at the dollar index. And I'm going to do a little bit differently this uh, this week. Um, I'm back and I'm going to try a different, a little bit of a different approach. So what we're going to do is um, in the past, some of the explanations that I've gotten into have been a little bit overly complicated. And I want to try and keep it as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you basic levels to keep an eye out for. And then my personal bias on which way the best trade opportunity is going to be. I know in the past we've talked about having a plan A and a plan B for going in both directions, but uh, this week we're just going to try having one trade, you know, one uh, you know higher probability trade plan in place. Now, if you see it, you know, if you see the market and it's moving in the opposite direction, you can always look for an entry going the opposite way. But uh, this way will keep a little bit simpler, and it'll also allow me to focus a little bit more on uh, something I think is very important: is risk to reward. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at the dollar index, of course, and this is just to get a general idea of where the dollar is going. Now, this is on the daily, and as we've seen, you know, for a while now, this has been in a very nice ascending channel. And even if you're not a big fan of channels or trend lines, you can recognize that we're getting higher highs and higher lows in the market. This is a basic market structure, and what we have here are some. Um, some daily levels, historical levels from the past. We've got levels of support and resistance that uh, price is currently fluctuating in between. We had a very uh, bearish day to end the week last Friday, so it'll be interesting to see how the dollar comes out. Um, you know, we've had a lot of fundamental news uh, with um, President Donald Trump um, de declaring uh, tariffs on Mexico. Also, we're in a little bit of a trade war with China. Um, so we've seen the dollar fluctuate a lot, and of course on Friday the dollar did take a big downward turn and basically uh, covered all of the bullish movement that had happened the, pre the whole rest of the week, all four of the previous days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday just erased all of that. So right now we're sitting on a very strong daily level of support, and we could go either way. Uh, we could break above or we could break below and uh, see if we can test the bottom of this ascending channel. But either way, uh, we do see just in uh, overall sense, the dollar is currently um, still bullish. So we want to keep an eye on that. Let's start by taking a look at, uh, well, not start, but uh, our first actual currency pair that we'll take a look at is AUD USD. Now, of course, this is on the daily. I just wanted to show you like where I'm getting some of these um, these historical levels from and we've got this level here uh, as you can see we've got a strong level of support that was then broken it is now resistance and we also have another historical level from way back here so as you can see um, whenever we look left and it's one of the most important things when you're trading is to look left we can see that these were very strong levels in the past okay we want to look for very obvious levels and then go from there and then that'll give us a good idea what to look at and to look for on 
as to what price is doing now. So we see here on Australian dollar, US dollar, we do have a little bit of a descending channel that price is broken out of. And now we see that it is very much ranging. Okay, So we've got price in this kind of range here. Not a big fan of that color. There we go. Uh, price is in this range. And this is what I'm going to be looking for this week is we have that strong daily level of resistance. We see that price is uh, ab above. We broke above that level of support or the resistance, which is now support. It was you know riding that all last week, and it is currently above it. And I'd like to see it keep pushing up and hit this uh, level of resistance and continue back down to the where price historically made this lowest low here to the bottom of this range. And of course, if we take a, a fib and we draw that out from this swing high to this swing low, we can see that's also in correlation with the 61.8 retracement level. Not a big thing, but what I do want to just emphasize is we want to take these strong levels, the, you know, have a bit of a zone. This is a, a nice supply zone in conjunction with this resistance level. And this just gives us a good structure to formulate a trade idea around. Now, you know, I talk to traders all the time from all different walks of life, from all different levels of experience, you know, and depending on who you talk to, some people are big fans of support and resistance, you know, um, they're very subjective. So some people aren't big fans of them, but it gives us an, a, a good structure to be able to look at putting a trade together with proper risk management. And because uh, beginning traders, that's the biggest mistake you'll make is trying to figure out where the best, absolute best entry with zero drawdown is. And that's never going to be what makes you profitable long term. What's going to make you profitable long term is finding good risk management, risk to reward in your trades. And then you can have a, a, a horrible win percentage. You can have like a 50 percent rate win loss ratio and still be profitable long term as long as you're putting that risk management plan into effect every time. Here, where we would take this trade is if we see a rejection at this supply zone and this daily resistance level, okay, we'll have our stop loss up here at the 78.6, uh, which is just a nice uh, 30. You want to have about between a 30 and a 40 pip stop loss for a normal trade. Average is about 35, but we'll put a, you know, a 32 pip stop loss up here and then look for the bottom of that structure, which is about 111, 112 pips. That's gonna give us a very nice uh, 3.5 R or 3.5 to one risk to reward ratio, okay? And if you're always looking for that type of risk to reward, um, you know, one to one is okay, two to one is great, three to one is the best, so three to one or more, it does mean you're gonna have to hold your trades for longer, but again, as you get more experience in the Forex market, you'll find that swing trading is really what's going to make you the most profitable. It's not scalping. I could do a whole webinar on that. But anyways, so this is the this is what I'm going to be looking for this month, this uh, this week, this setup. If I see a nice rejection at this level, we'll enter and then see where it goes from there and just shoot for the bottom of this uh, this channel. Now, even here. Uh, this is almost a good two to one risk to reward just down to this daily support level where it was, you know, having trouble uh, struggling at before. But long term, I want to take it down as because this has been in a downtrend for quite a while. And I just want to see a continuation of that overall downtrend, even all the way from up here. All right. Next, though, let's take a look at Euro USD. And again, if we kind of zoom out to the daily we can see where we're getting some of these levels of support and resistance from. All the way back here, we see multiple taps, okay, confirming these levels here. And again, this was support. It's still support, okay, has yet to be broken. And on our four hour time frame, has formed a really nice triple bottom here. So this is a very, very easy trailer. If you didn't, if you weren't able to jump into this trade on Thursday or Friday. Um, we still have a chance for it possibly to make a fourth tap. And if it does, 
uh, maybe at market open, maybe we see a nice opening gap in Asian session tonight, then uh, let's look for that. Okay, let's look for a, a, another retest of this support level, which is, again, a very strong daily support level. And you can see how this has been in this sideways range for a while. Okay, we had uh, it, uh, you know, outside of that, in, out, now it's been bouncing. We've seen it bounce one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times inside this range. So we're just playing the upper and lower limits of this range. Very, very simple trading. Keep your trading very simple. Um, and for that, use a, just a standard 35 pip stop loss. We don't really have a historical level down here to um, use as a as a guide. You see there's really nothing to the left for us to look at as far as um, using a, a stop or placing a stop. So we're just going to use the, uh, the wicks that we see from this triple bottom and these are a good 10 to 15 pips below that. And 35 is a good risk to reward ratio. So again, we're using proper risk management and I'm gonna emphasize that a lot in the videos in the future. Uh, so there we go. And back up to the top of this range, 130 pips. Um, this is a phenomenal, at 35 pip uh, stop loss, this is a phenomenal um, almost for our trade. Again, um, you know, institutional traders will use R multiples um, to express risk to reward. Um, it's the same as saying a uh, four to one risk to reward ratio if you say a four R trade. Um, but as you can see here, uh, we're right about almost a bit 3.7. And that's again, great risk to reward. Um, you, you don't have to win a lot of those to be profitable every month. Um, you know, if we took a, if we took a like real quick, I, I promise really quick. Let's say if we took a uh, 10 trades and we only had a 50% uh, win ratio, okay? Out of, and we kept our three to one risk to reward ratio. The if the the five that we lost, and let's say we're using um, uh, let's make it very very simple, okay? Uh, we're using a 30 pip stop loss and we're looking for 90 pips of profit. So the five trades that we lost of 30 pips um, is gonna be, uh, let's do this, 150 pip loss. And then the five wins, obviously, okay, so five times 90, those five wins, that's gonna be 450, okay, for a total at the end of the month, you know, and this just taking 10 trades a month and with really good setups and just letting them play out. They might take a week or two. You know, you're going to have to swing trade these, but this is just as an example. And so obviously the end of the month total is going to be 300 pips. Okay, so you see how using that risk to reward structure, okay, looking for the longer term targets and using risk management is far more important than your entries, okay? And, and you can have a, a horrible win-loss ratio. In a trending market, you should be able to have closer to a 70 to 80% win-loss ratio. And if that was the case, I mean, you can imagine that, that you're, you're gonna have closer to 500 pips. And to just for just 10 trades in a month, you know, 500 pip month, it can easily, easily make you a lot of money in the Forex market. So you don't have to be, don't swing for the fences with every trade trying to make this next trade the one that, you know, regains all of the losses for the last month. Okay, have a good solid risk management plan. And these are the things that are much, much more important. This is why I'm doing just very, very simple analysis for you guys, because it's not the trade setups. It's not the analysis. It, it, too many people focus too much on the charting and the technical analysis, and that's only 20% of trading in Forex. Everything else is your mental as you know, the mental aspect of the game, uh, and your money management, your risk management, your rules, and applying the strategies that you have, okay? There's no strategy out there that's gonna make you Forex millionaire overnight, no matter how many of these marketers would like to tell you that. That's, 
that's completely completely false. I mean, that's why I do these markups for you guys for free. I want to give you guys some ideas of what to do in the market, but what's going to make you profitable is having a strict regimen every day, being in front of the charts at a you know a at a, a set amount of time every day, having rules to trade by that you stick with even when they're not working for you. You might adjust them in different market conditions, but you don't just abandon them and go on to the next indicator or the next template or the next strategy that you see on Facebook. None of that. You stick with it. You have good risk management, you know, and you don't let the losing trades affect your, uh, your trade confidence. Okay. Anyways, going too far off. We're already 16 minutes in. My mistake, I was trying to make this like a quick video, but these are really things you can tell I'm very passionate about this. I've been trying to get these across to my students as well, that it is not the strategies that will make you profitable. So if somebody tells you they have a strategy that will make you a Forex millionaire, uh, they do not know what they're talking about or they're trying to sell you something. All right. So uh, let's take a look at GBP USD. Uh, so here we have, very, again, very, very simple price action breakdown. We've got a nice descending channel, um, and we've got some good, let me adjust this, uh, some good levels of uh, support and resistance from the past here. Uh, and then we've got this nice tap that if we go back in time, we see that that's getting tapped over and over again. Okay, we want to use these very, very obvious levels when we're when we're looking for places to enter our trades and then we drop down to the four hour and we've got two different things two different trades uh, that could possibly play out on this and again this is the four hour but here uh, if we get if we get a reversal here which we looks like we've got a nice swing low here we want to look for price to come back up and retest this daily resistance level let me move this over this daily resistance level and drop and if we get that uh, it's also in line with our descending channel upper limit and my price action students know that that's something we call trend plus structure it's a very high probability setup and then we just want we have like this minor supply zone up here from these swing highs uh, and it's right in line with the swing high that we're using for the Fibonacci levels so that's given us about a 55 which is a little bit bigger stop loss but it's a 55 pip stop loss and the first trade alone is about a three to one it's 2.7 uh, R trade and that's just down to this minor support level that we have from over here okay from here before we had this huge spike uh, I believe this was some brexit news that we had back in January uh, so we have that and then the continuation of that is down to the bottom of the channel, which is right in line with a strong daily support level. So we have that, and then that one's a very long-term 320 pip target. But, I mean, it's worth it to get in at a good, I mean, if you get a good entry on this, uh, it's worth it to partial out some profits, maybe near this take profit one level of around 150, and then let the, the rest go. Okay, because your your success in forex is going to be determined by uh, the by letting your winners go, not by letting your losers go. And a lot of people get that mixed up as well. You'll hold on to your losers, wait, hoping that they'll let you out of that position. Uh, but you're very quick to secure profits, and so if you're if you're letting your losers run to a, a 60 and 70, 80 pips, hoping that they'll turn around, but your winners, you're cutting them out at like 50 pips. Uh, because you're afraid of that they're going to retrace and take you out of break even uh, and you want to secure that profit you know do that math on you know 10 out of 10 trades um, you're obviously the end result is that you're going to have a negative uh, trading account so you know have the patience and the confidence in your setups to let them do what they're going to do and to make you some money all right so that's gu let's take a Another look at NZD USD, and of course, I've I've done all these markups already, uh, just to save time on this. You guys don't need to watch me put lines on charts. What well, what we need to talk about is where are we going to get into these trades at? NZD USD is is still in a downtrend, but uh, it's hitting very strong levels of support, and the uh, the better trade on this is going to be looking for us. You can see we had uh, this 
trend line that uh, this top of this channel that this thing broke out of. All right. Um, it actually might be easier if we drew it all the way up from here. So you can see, I just didn't want it to, uh, weren't able to see that completely off the chart. But as you can see, price broke out and then retested this. And then that's why we're looking for a possible retracement trade. This is a bit of a counter trend trade because the overall trend has been down and we're looking for price to push back up. Uh, but if it doesn't do that, we, we just won't take an entry. As simple as that. Um, if you know, if this breaks below this support level, you know, you can always look for a sell and do the opposite. Um, I would use, let's take a look at, well, first let's take a look at this buy. The buy is basically going to be down to this previous support level, which is about 30. You could even stretch this out to 35, but it's going to be, this is a, like I said, it's a counter trend trade, so we can't go for a full three to one. This is more of a two to one risk to reward ratio, and you could still get that with about 35 pips. Yeah. Um, so that would be your uh, stop loss, and then you're just looking to take it back up to this upper resistance level, this upper supply zone. So look for that. Now, if we were to take this as a short trade, let's say we got a break and a retest here at this level and we see it starting to continue on back down, um, then it, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to want to put this above the last swing high, which means you're going to need to have it be at least 45, if not 50 pips. And then beyond that, we really don't have a, uh, uh, well, I guess we do. Sorry, I didn't see that. So we have this support level historically below that. If we just take it down to there, um, that's about 75. So not a good risk to reward ratio on that. And this is a good example of why, you know, if you take this, you're going to have to hold it beyond that support level and it may not be worth it. The, the risk might not be worth the reward. And you have to analyze each trade setup. Not every trade setup is tradable. Okay. That's something a lot of traders don't understand at first is that just because you see a good setup, it doesn't mean that the reward is worth it. Uh, you know, it might be a great entry based on technical analysis, but the amount of pips that it's eventually going to give out isn't worth the amount of risk that you have to put into it. And this is a good example of that. You might get, uh, you might get two to one, and that's not too bad. That's not too bad. But some of them, like if if we get stopped out we get a double bottom forming here and that's very possible this could form a double bottom um, we could see it get into uh, a, a divergent scenario if that's the case this is only going down maybe 30 pips and depending on where you get this in maybe maybe less okay so even if we brought our stop loss down even lower one to one risk to reward ratio it's just not worth it okay so make sure you're doing a full risk to reward analysis before you jump in a trade and just because it's a good setup doesn't mean that you should put your money on the line for it look for ones that are going to pay you off big time and not just you know ones that you're going to have to grind out a living for so you want your winners to basically cover all of your losing trades but without trying to swing for the fences and over leverage you know using the exact same risk management you used with your losing trades not altering it okay Next, we're going to take a look at USD CAD. I'll try and get through these quick for you. Uh, so USD CAD's a, a tricky one. You see, we really have to zoom out on this one. Uh, it's been in an uptrend for the most part, um, but it's in between any type of major support or resistance levels. But one thing that is a possible setup, let me... Uh, Auto that. Okay, you see this sideways ranging movement that it's been doing for a while now. We did just break out of this range on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we're starting to see a little bit of some divergent um, conditions. I prefer it when uh, we're more towards the oversold and overbought extremes, um, like 80 20. Those are the levels I use on my RSI for overbought and oversold. But we are seeing some slight divergence, and with a kind of a minor supply level here, 
And you see we, we have this very steep trend line. I'm banking more on the break of this trend line. And the reason being, you, the steeper the trend line, the more likely it is that it's going to get broken. Steep trend lines don't hold very well. So I'm only drawing this trend line out just kind of as a guide. I'm not using it as an entry or anything like that. But if we can get price to break that trend line and then maybe retest that, we would have a nice little, let me pull this down, potential head and shoulders pattern. Okay, you see we have the left shoulder here, head, and then if this forms kind of a right shoulder and retests this minor supply zone, then this would be a nice short trade. And if we take it up to basically uh, to the top of this swing high, it's about 40 pips for uh, almost 90 pips. Again, not a great risk to reward, but you can always take that all the way down to this next level, which is about 140. And then that's where you would get your three to one. But to be honest, if it made it down to this first support level, the reason why I would jump out is because of this entire movement here, that's right here. That's where the 61.8 is. Um, and that's just, I would just be at least partial out 70% of your profits and then let the rest run to see if they'll go down all the way to the, to almost the 88.6 level. And that's a very, very deep retracement to try and take a, a, a take profit target out of. But like I said, this is going to really have all hinges on whether it's going to form that possible break and retest head and shoulders pattern. Um, otherwise, you know, it's not really a lot of potential in USD CAD. We've got much better setups on other um, on other currency pairs. Next uh, is USD Swiss franc. Now this one's crazy uh, because let's zoom way out. You see on USD Swiss franc, we got quite the wedge going on here. We've had this wedge playing out before for a while. Not not as uh, you know not as obvious as the wedge that we used on NZD USD a couple months ago, but this is forming a bit of a wedge pattern now. And if we zoom into the, so I just want you to see where this ascent, I don't know what that was about. You see, it just that just moved like crazy. Um, yeah, okay. Anyways, let me move this back up. Weird. Uh, Trading views got some gremlins today. So, anyways, let's take a look. So, if we drop down to the four-hour time frame, I just want you to know where those uh, those ascending this ascending channel line is coming from. Oh, that's probably why it was uh, on the daily. We do need to adjust that. Let me get this out of the way. And bring that down to the candle body. Yes. There we go. Um, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for price to possibly come down to that level there and bounce. And that's that's the that's basically the trade. So we've got a nice demand zone down here, and we do have a little bit of divergence. So what I'm looking for on this is if we make uh, another lower low, which looks like we're about to make, and we still have this divergence here on the RSI. And I see here, this is good oversold conditions. It's here right there on the 20. And now we're making higher lows, which with each successive swing low on the RSI. And we're making lower lows with actual price. This is a good kind of divergent setup. And that's why I'm looking to take this long. Uh, we'd enter here. Uh, either on the next swing low, if it doesn't come all the way down to this level, that's fine. But uh, on this, we've got about um, we've got a good three to one or three R setup. A little bit less. Uh, well, it's actually about two point five, but still good. We've got one hundred and forty up to this resistance level up top here, and then uh, if we want to, you know, give us ourselves uh, enough room down here to this minor support level is 55. Now you can shorten this up if you want to about 45 uh, to make the risk to reward um, that three to one. And that's fine too. 
but that's why we would be entering into this one because uh, we've got all those factors playing in. And if it breaks below that, of course, it will invalidate the trade. Um, but I think that uh, that's probably going to be the best approach for uh, USD Swiss franc. And then last, we've got USD JPY. And again, there are tons of other setups or ways that you can look at this. These is, this is just one possible setup. One that, but the point is, if these scenarios play out, you will know where to enter and where to uh, look for putting in your stop loss and take profits. And these examples should help show you what proper risk management and stop loss placement looks like. Now, in USD JPY, this one's a crazy one as well because this has been dropping for a, you know, a bit of a minute. But we had that break and retest of this resistance level. And we have this support from back a ways uh, on the daily chart. And so this, because this is falling so quickly right now, I'm not looking for a single bounce off of the support. I want to see a good kind of like a divergent setup happening. And that would look something a little bit more like... Um, Let's see here. Where is uh, well? I can't find it now, but it used to be. Ah, it doesn't matter. Um. Anyways, what we're looking for is a. Is, kind of a double bottom, but more of something along this lines where I'd like to see uh, a divergent scenario happen where we get uh, a lower low and then get that higher low divergent setup kind of where we get price doing this and then the RSI doing this and getting that divergent um, set up. You, we could still get that with a double bottom. It's not a real big problem. Uh, but when we get something more of like this lightning bolt or what we call in the Renko course, we call it a falling W, something like that happening, it's just a much stronger reversal setup. And we'll be looking for that as far as like a return to median trade in the Renko course as well. So this is a Nice. Uh, this is how we take a long. Uh, we look for a long setup, and on this, as you can see, uh, nice 40 pip stop loss underneath this level, and then we've got almost 200 plus pips back up to that resistance, uh, resistance level, supply zone, however you want to look at it. Um, so that this could be a very very profitable long term trade as well. You you will pro you will more than likely have to hold this for a week or two, but I mean, if you're making pips, don't uh, no need to complain, right? This, and my philosophy has always been, you know, people that try to um, scalp, it's not really scalping. Uh, you know, if, if you talk to any actual traders, scalping is when you're looking for like just pennies, like you're trying to take just micro, like, like your actual points. You're not looking for even a pip or two. You're looking for points off of a pip and just doing these, these micro transactions like a hundred times a day. That's true scalping. What, what a lot of people have come to term scalping in the social media, Facebook market uh, of Forex is when you look for like five to 10 to 15 pips on like the one or the five minute time frame. Um, but really you're opening it and then you might have to hold it for like, you know, 15 minutes up to an hour, two hours before you hit your 10 or 15 pips. Um, that's, it's really technically just intraday trading. Um, but whatever you want to call it, why would you want to look for five or six of those setups to get 50 or 60 pips and you will have to lose a couple of those. So, you know, you're probably going to have to take 10 different trades to get that 60 pips when you could just find one really good entry on like the four hour time frame here and just let it keep accumulating pips. You just take that one trade and then it makes like 15 to 20 pips one day and then it makes them maybe 40 or 50 the next day and it just keeps adding up until you hit that take profit and you don't have to manage it you don't have to be glued to the trades i just can't stress enough how much 
better for your trading sanity and for your bank account that learning how to be patient and holding trades, swing trading uh, is going to be for you, but it's just something that you'll everybody will have to come to kind of on their own. All right, anyways, I don't want to hold you guys over any longer today. Thanks for joining me for today's um, trade to weekly analysis. I really appreciate you guys coming in. Listen, if you haven't heard, um, by the way, uh, if you want to join the, um, if you want to join us, here, let me bring this up. Actually, I won't. Um, if you want to head over to zenfxtrading.com, you can sign up for a free week of uh, to trial or not a free week. You can uh, you can sign up for a free trial of our price action course. It you get the first week of the course, and you can you know you can have that for as long as you need to to go through those videos and test it out. You know, check it out, see if you like it, if it's a fit for you, if you want to start learning how to do technical analysis and price action trading. Um, again. You know, we're showing you how to work the charts, but there's so much more to it. And we're going to be adding a lot of um, a lot more uh, more modules as far as um, learning trading discipline, putting in a routine, uh, the psychology of trading, working on a lot of those soft skills. So that's going to be uh, coming in, hopefully, to the price action course very soon, as well as to the Renko course, which people are loving. Um, that's a great strategy. We've got tons of students making a lot of great pips off the Renko course uh, each week. And we've just got a great bunch of traders in our private student communities that um, a lot of them say that that's worth the price of admission is just having access to all the other traders that they can talk to, bounce ideas off of. I do live trade rooms and, you know, are constantly pushing them to do better and better analysis and, um, you know, get outside their comfort zones as far as trading. And it really helps them grow as traders. So that's one thing. If you want to check that out, zenfxtrading.com. Go, uh, go check out the different courses that we've got. And also, last but not least, I would be remiss if I didn't mention our Mr. Robot Expert Advisor. Uh, this is an amazing scalping EA uh, that I developed and uh, we've got a lot of people getting great results off of it. But uh, we had a great uh, one year anniversary with this account. It has been running successfully for a full year. It has not gone over 20% drawdown in 12 months and has never had a losing month. Hasn't had a single losing month or month of drawdown every single month has had on average a 7% equity gain on this account and we are getting very very close to uh, hitting a hundred percent equity gain on this account or basically doubling the, the account and you know a lot of people want very very fast results but having something that you can slow grow consistently and safely uh, an account is uh, um, is amazing especially when you can compound that after a while and uh, you know you think about a bank account's only get you going to get you three to five percent a year this can double an account in a year and with very 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 safe risk management trading only one pair uh, a year this has done uh if we scroll down here here we go uh we've almost hit our uh almost hit ten thousand pips caught in one year and last month we did 560 pips in just one month alone. So very, 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 very powerful tool. If you want to know more about that, all the information is on our website as well. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for joining me this Sunday or whenever you're watching this after the fact. I've been Ryan with ZenFX. Look for me again next Sunday. We'll have another price action markup to help you guys get your trade plans in place. Until then, I will see you in the charts. You can message me anytime you want at any of the links below. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have or help you get started in your trading journey or maybe help you a little bit down the path in your trading career if you're already a semi-successful trader. And uh, other than that, let's grab some great pips this week. I'll see you guys in the charts. And as always, let's get those pips. All right, take care, guys.